Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to the Comic Book Syndicate. We are back here reviewing superhero movies. This is Mike L, co-host of the Comic Book Syndicate, co-host of Flea Market Fantasy, co-host of Here Comes the Spider Cast. I'm joined by G.I. Jolie. What are your credits, G.I. Jolie? Tell us. What do you mean? Your credits. What, what else do you do? Oh. <laughs> Full volume? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I occasionally... <laughs> not last week do full volume podcast with uh harvey brent who is a regular guest on our show um and uh i i write for the website i do other things for the comic book <laughs> syndicate i guess i'm sometimes on spider cast that's right most of the time uh yeah. speaking of most of the time we have bex luther with us who's also on hey. spider cast yeah I'm, I'm always here i'm always yeah. there I'm always everywhere. If you're like, hey, you free to do something? My answer is yes, I am free. <laughs> I, I do nothing. The only time I was not free was because I was literally watching Shang-Chi. <laughs> but besides that. There you go. Dedication. And then yeah. also from here dedication. comes Spider-Cast. Yeah, you're dedicated. Well, only when you have nothing to do, which is all the time. But anyway, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> And then we have from here comes Spider-Cast, Joshua Mervell. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> wow. right. Good job. We're great. We're, we're all right. right. So, don't pop yourself up. Right. We don't like <laughs> braggarts. It's uh, weird that we're all actually friends in real life. You wouldn't true. be able to tell. Even though we've never, we've only seen each other once or in once. two years. That's not our fault. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Twice. Twice. twice I saw twice. Joe Lee the other day. That's true. Yeah. And then, like and then went in my own house and cried after she left because I was sad. <laughs> yeah, all four of us, it's only ever been the once for Far From Home is the last time. Yes. Spider-Man. Yeah, because I, uh, I skimped out on the Bloodshot review. Sorry. Uh, oh, you know? that's right. I forgot about that. I, well, you, you, to you, this were day. Living in, you weren't in Windsor at that point, right? You were already Yeah, gone, that's why I, I didn't go. Yeah. See, you said you were going to come back for every movie, but I every, knew you were not going to come every back for Bloodshot. Good. I knew it. I don't oh, think I was going to yep. actually go see Bloodshot regardless of where I lived or what was going on in my current life okay. so anyway like... <laughs> for those that have been not been watching spider cast the flea market fantasy for those that don't recognize me i am sporting what my former roommate claire calls my jesus shit and this is what well, that's why i look like this um so anyway um yes still michael still here after all these years now we're going to talk about shang chi um i just saw it i saw it in a theater when i bought the ticket it was completely empty the theater but then by the time i got there it was a cap full so i was a little bit worried but we're not going to talk about that we're talking about the fun stuff which is the movie uh i'm just gonna say i did enjoy most of it when i was watching it however i really really did not like the last third of the film with all the cgi monsters and all that like i honestly just completely i pretty much checked out when they started fighting monsters and stuff so my favorite things were the gags, like the, the karaoke gag was my absolute favorite thing about the movie. The fact that they brought it back in the post credit scene was awesome. That was my favorite thing. Full spoiler the movie. review, by the way. Yeah, yeah. spoiler. Yeah. Full spoiler. Yeah. They fight monsters, there's karaoke. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's my mini review, and we can get to my full review later, but uh, G.I. Jolie, what did you think? Um, I really enjoyed it. I cried for several different reasons, one being... Um, I didn't know how much it would affect me to see an almost all Asian cast in a superhero film. So that was really intense emotionally um, in a good way. And I I loved it. I, too, am not a huge fan of CGI uh, fights. But I will say I enjoyed it because the last few times I've seen CGI dragons... Mm-hmm. They've either been fighting or they've been saving, like, you know, saving the world or whatever. I just, I, I, I yeah. can, I can, no. I'm talking <laughs> about, like, <laughs> when Aquafina did another dragon. Um, but no, I just, uh, I can make concessions for CGI dragons. Because I don't need for there to be any suspension of like disbelief. Like, I know the dragons aren't real, mm. so I have an easier time hanging out with CGI dragons and just like mm. being in the fight. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Okay. So, yeah, we'll come back to you a little bit later. Uh, Bex Luthor, what was your first impression? I mean, it was dope as hell. Dude, <laughs> dude, that was rad. Oh, my God. And I'm sure Josh might agree with me, but the level of Pokemon, dope. Shout out to the <laughs> yeah. I loved the, all the CGI creatures. That was awesome. The choreography, the fight choreography, amazing. Um, the the very handsome dad, which I man, what a <laughs> dream like boat. Cry? Holy, sh- I cried like five times in this movie. Okay, this movie was about family, Dom. Okay, it was. <laughs> speaking of bloodshot. Yeah, speaking of bloodshot, it's about family. No, um, I, I, I. A dude, and he he loses his his mother young, and I just kind of hit me in a really personal place. Um, and then his dad is kind of you know there. I don't. It just was ugh. And like the tension with his sister. Oh man, I just the family dynamics they get me every time. It was so even with the amount of goofs that I think maybe didn't need to be here, it would still really affected me. Yeah. Also, Morris. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get a Morris plushie. I'm so excited. Oh, Morris is the little furball creature thing, right? Yeah, with the the wings. The, the little fuzzy awesome. ottoman. Yeah, mm. pretty cool. Gotta say, uh, Joshua Marvell, what's your first impression? Um, yeah, I think that this is um, one of the best solo Marvel movies, um, or or at least an origin film as well. Like mm. it, for me, it's up there with like. Black Panther and Iron Man, the first Iron Man. Um, I think uh, the big CGI fight at the end, um, kind of addressing that concern, for me, it completely worked because there's like, there's a goal that is actually like related to the characters. And there's like a, there's like heart to that, like, we have to stop this big thing from happening where in something like even the first Avengers film, it's like, uh, we need to blow up a portal, I guess. And all these like faceless right. enemies that nobody right. really cares about. But this yeah. one is like the, the villain is doing things because he thinks it's the right thing to do. He's doing it for love mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. our hero has to stop him, but doesn't want to, because again, it's also out of love. Right. So I think that the, the CGI monsters kind of lended itself to the story rather than it all leading up to this final battle, right? Like it felt like the whole point of this movie was to tell that story that happened at the end where I, yeah. Avengers, they could, they could kind of like replace um, the, like the final battle in the Avengers with any other type of battle. And it would have worked right where with Shang-Chi, it feels like it had to kind of lead towards this right Good point. so for me for me it totally worked and yeah i'm all for big cgi monsters if it if it's like you know for the story if it's if it's there and it, and it works and you know all the pieces kind of fall into place well i think we can all agree you know looking back on avengers one and two first of all i was sick of the bad guy wanting to destroy the city or the world by the time we got to x-men in 1999 i was already tired of it <laughs> Uh, and then the floating city in Avengers would in two. Let's not ever mention that again. But in this movie, the fact that the bad guy, his motivation was, I can hear my wife calling for me. I, I was watching this movie going, this is insane. All this movie is is it's about the son trying to stop the father from, you know, uh, wanting to reunite with his own mother that he probably well he obviously wishes was alive, but he knows it can't be her. So I'll give it. 10 out of 10 for doing a completely original climax, an original, like, you know, larger story. I'll definitely give you that. However, I think my one issue with the ending was once they got to that almost Shangri-La type city, I I thought that that was enough that, okay, there's this cave across the lake and then there's this voice, there's this thing. But once those bat creatures started coming out, I, I don't know about you guys, but I honestly was like, what the hell is going on now? Like, it just seems like an unnecessary complication. Was I the only one that felt that? Did anyone else be like, what is happening again? Why are they doing that? Where are these things? Julie, well, without, what do you think? Or Josh? Well, without that, would there would there even be a reason to stop the dad? He would just go into the cave and it would be empty and it wasn't her. Well, maybe there'd be right? something else. I don't know. Like, like what? Been, I don't know. 
Well, I, I don't know. I'm not writing right. the story. <laughs> I'm just saying that, um, I don't know. I just didn't, I just didn't like that. It, for me at that point, that's where it started to go off the rails, the ending. I'm like, okay, what is going on? What? What is happening? I don't know. I thought it was too much. Like maybe it could have just been that they all just fight each other and that's it. And then there's some, maybe there is something else, but it's just not a bunch of bat creatures flying out of the cave or whatever. But what but are the dog know. cats supposed <clears throat> to eat? They're hungry. They want to eat them. I like them. Sorry, Joey. Joey, what were you saying? <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. Um, so I didn't know this until I read more about it, but apparently, because I thought it, I agree, it, it did get a little. Um, I was impressed at how straightforward the plot and the character de- development was until up until the part where they got to Tello. And apparently, there's a lot of mythology in that they use to inform or like to inspire that that fantasy world. And like most (laughs) Asian mythologies, there's like a million creatures and there's like a million gods. And like they used all of those creatures that you see are actual, I mean, other than like the fox with the nine tails, apparently is like a Chinese, like they're mythical beasts. I like not not being familiar with the mythology. I can see how it can be overwhelming because once they got there, the message, like everything just kind of got convoluted um, between the uh, like I, I was very, very confused once I got to Tello and Shang-Chi was like, I we need to they were like, we need to you need to get with us and we need to stop your father. And he was like, but why would you want to stop my father? He can hear the voice of our mother. And they both like, didn't want to until they were told or until they discovered that it's actually the evil dragon, that evil dragon who's trying to escape from the mountain. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then it kind of, that's where it kind of smoothed out for me again. And once that, part of the plot was revealed i was like one this is amazing and two okay i i'm i'm back i'm back on the train i didn't think like i it once they, i agree that once they got to tello it was kind of insanity and hard to understand and then they kind of but they paced it well they gave us this really like awesome uh fight training sequence mm-hmm. so yeah uh okay okay so let's back up a little bit here let's talk about some of the other parts of the movie um i mean without getting into the characters yet which we're going to get into in a minute um i obviously thought the movie was funny and i think a lot of people have talked about the fight scenes in this movie they're obviously excellent right yeah um so i mean i I don't know i mean okay so we've talked about the plot Uh, i guess i didn't love it as much as you guys but at least it was doing something semi-original right especially compared to other marvel films like in the same way the black panther explored afro futurism this explored asian mythology which i really appreciate now that being said here's my other criticism is that as i'm watching this movie i'm thinking okay i know i like dragons i like monsters i like mythology why is this so dark why is the cgi so muddy and like monotone and you know i'm not an expert on manga but i've seen my fair share of manga films like spirited way and all those movies and when they ever whenever they have those creatures it's so colorful it's like it makes me just think why didn't they take a page from thor ragnarok or guardians of the galaxy and just go with a full comic book color palette did that bother anyone else or was it just me like i thought that all the cgi at the end was really muddy i mean i didn't think that all all of the like the creatures that they introduced that are all mostly CGI, I mm-hmm. thought they were awesome. Like the the horse, <laughs> the weird horse. Obviously, the 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 nine tails and the vulpix, like beautiful. <laughs> Morris, Morris was cute. Okay, Morris was cool. Um, <laughs> the yeah, big, I- the lion dogs. Like I I really enjoyed the CGI. Actually, the dragons character design, the color choice, I loved it. I mean, probably just you yeah. then. I watch, <laughs> I watch dark, gritty anime all the time. So, you know, it didn't bother me. <laughs> yeah. Once the dweller in the dark, is it that is that the dragon's name? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once he came out and he was fighting, um, that's when, to me, it got really, really dark, which, again, I'm fine with because he's supposed to be evil. <laughs> I didn't think it was I didn't think it was too dark. And I was watching a less than stellar version of the film. Mm. Mm. You were in a less than stellar theater, you mean? Gotcha. Hey, my living room is just fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, that that is definitely the case for me. The The movie theater that I was in was awful. Uh-huh. Uh, it was so dark um, and it's yes. not it was not the movie itself. It was the projection like it, it was just not good. It was not good because I was watching the same scene um, in like the clip that they released on YouTube. And it's so much better and so much okay. brighter. So for me, at least, uh, it was definitely my theater that kind of muddied everything down. I, I think that uh, when we're, get, we're, we're going to be able to watch this on Disney Plus in like 20 days or something like that, like it's going on pretty soon. Sure. So I'm super excited to watch it again and revisit it. Um, on my TV at home because it'll actually be like the true colors because, yeah, the movie theater I was in was like very, very dark. Well, I, I, I've i realized ever since especially Blu-rays kind of began as a technology, I've noticed Blu-rays look better than the theater, at least the theaters that we go to in Windsor. Right. It's almost like no one knows. I know that bulbs are expensive, but projection, I never realized how important it was. But when you go to a theater and the, the bulb isn't bright enough, it looks like crap. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're right. It, it's it'd probably be improved by like an HD or four K four K TV uh, screening. But anyway, oh, okay, going so to like if, an IMAX or something that right. that you have to like keep up with it. Like you know, the sixteen year old kid operating this is not gonna know or have the energy to like make sure the lighting is good for every single screening compared to sure. like a movie theater that specializes in that. Right. Well. So. That lends credence to my theory that, I mean, when I was a kid, we still had ushers in, like, they almost look like bellhops with, like, flashlights. So I don't know why we can't go back to that. But, I mean, we're in a different world now, so whatever. We're not going to talk about that. That's a whole other podcast. Why don't we jump to the cast, okay? Let's talk about uh, these actors here. I admit that before I saw this movie, I'd only read one or two Shang-Chi comics in my entire life. I know that the the, the Shang-Chi in the comic is designed to look closer to like Bruce Lee ish. Whereas this guy, it feels like they're going for a more, a more of a a Jackie Chan type uh, physique and kind of a look, right? Maybe that's just my, I don't know, misinterpretation. That's what I thought, but GI Julie, the the two Kung Fu people, there's only two (laughs) Asian types that I know of. So uh, GI Julie, let's, uh, let's get your impression of the lead actor here. Um, one, he's from the GTA. What up? Two, I've been watching him for years on Kim's Convenience. He's amazing. Fantastic. And of course, we're, t- we're talking about Simu Liu. Um, he runs his own Facebook page. He's just Toronto's darling at this point. Quite honestly, like CBC, what did you do? So just a little backstory before we talk about it, because it's it, it's going to come up. Um, CBC just like axed Kim's Convenience out of nowhere. Yeah, it's blindsided little... the entire cast, including Simu Liu, who had some things to say about it. And it's like, did they, like, realize what was happening with Shang-Chi? Did they think that, like, Mm -hmm. what did CBC think was going to happen? I honestly had, like, uh, uh, I was just so fearful that this would just fall Mm -hmm. along the wayside of, like, Suicide Squad and just be Mm. terrible. But I'm so happy that, like, it's getting brave reviews, like, Ebert gave it like 3.5 out of four stars. It, like it's amazing. Everyone loved it. And I feel like CBC is really kicking their ass, their own asses for canceling probably the funnest show that they have. Anyway, I mean, to come out of out of their closets since Shit's Creek. So um, anyway, do I love Simulu? Yes. I don't know that I have anything to say about his physique <laughs> yeah well just um, like i mean I, I guess it's is that who you pictured as shang chi i mean but if you haven't read any, any of the comics it doesn't really matter but i have something uh, to say about his physique well, <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i have things to say i just don't know that i have contributions to what michael was saying but if i had to think about it um i, I recall just some of the covers of master of kung fu 
And to me, that is Bruce Lee. Yes. I guess. Uh, but I don't know. Um, so, like sort of a lean muscular. Is that what right. you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And this guy is kind of a little bit more short and stout like Jackie Chan. I wouldn't say he's short and stout. Not short. Short compared to he's more, not me, it, but I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't compare him to Jackie Chan. I would compare him more to someone like a Jet Li, um, okay. or yeah. But um, yeah, he's someone I pictured as Shang Chi, like okay. immediately. I mean, after he tweeted it, I was like, yeah, okay. Um, I was really afraid that they'd put him in like weird Jesus hair, because. So that's what I'm saying. Masters of Kung Fu, it was long. And there was a headband and like a typical gi costume. So, yeah, I'm glad that they kind of went with a they they did like a very they took a very modern route to their approach on what he looked like. Uh, all right, Bex Luthor. And while you start answering Bex Luthor, I'm going to open up a window because it's hot in here. But don't worry, I'm listening. Okay, that won't affect the sound quality at all. Uh, <laughs> wee-oo, wee-oo, wee-oo. <laughs> uh, no, I was going to say, well, if we look back at most of the Shang-Chi comics from before, like, the 2000s, uh, just pretty problematic, right? I mean, I think I was telling you guys last week on the spider cast that like the first like 30 years of Shang-Chi, he's literally just colored in yellow. Like, yes, <laughs> like it's that it's I mean. We, we You can look up 8 million videos on YouTube of the history of Shang-Chi and they'll all be like, hey, warning, this is sensitive material because <laughs> shockingly, the Western world didn't treat Asian people well <laughs> mm-hmm. and still don't. But like, yeah, this was a westernized interpretation of a kung fu master, right? So I'm more familiar with Shang-Chi for more modern stuff. Like anything, anytime he does anything with Spider-Man, that's like, the only stuff that I know, really. Um, just because I'm not a big kung fu person. Mm-hmm. But I might be now. These are the boys that are in these movies. Damn. <laughs> Damn, these boys. I love that they had to give him his Marvel shirtless scene. Because he's a lead Marvel man and he needs a shirtless scene. They all do. Loki got one. So, yeah. his turn. And they made it into a joke. <laughs> and it was great. And he was still ripped. And I hope that he didn't have to dehydrate himself too much for that because I know that <laughs> while it is pretty to look at, it is not realistic and men don't worry. Ladies don't need that. That's if I was contract, if I was contract contractually obligated to be completely ripped, I would also have it in my current contract that I would have a shirtless scene. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You're seeing this. <laughs> I've, I've worked, I worked for three years to make sure that this happens. <laughs> I think that's literally every male superhero. Yeah. <laughs> right. Kumail Nanjiani, when that happens and we're watching Eternals, my head might just explode. <sighs> this cast is very attractive. Yeah. I can't take much more of this. <laughs> uh, well, Josh, did you want to say anything about Simu Liu? What's his name? Simu Liu. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. He's fantastic. I, I think he's hilarious. Uh uh, he's great on Kim's Convenience. I I love that show. So when I found out uh, he was going to be playing uh, a lead in a Marvel movie, I was super excited. Uh, Canadian-born actor, super close to us, which is also like pretty sweet. Uh, I think that he uh, has the physique. He's obviously been trained or or has worked extremely hard with the stunt coordinators. Uh, to learn all of these like uh, martial arts moves and um, all of the stunts that he's done. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed him in this. And, and the way that he kind of works with Katie as well, Aquafina's character, um, that dynamic is so good. Maybe one of my favorite dynamics in like duos in any like Marvel property it's so well done i love that they can have these two characters and not like force them together by by the end of the movie like now you guys kiss all right you're you're mm-hmm. a boy you're a girl now kiss do it mm-hmm. no it's like no no they're they're friends like i i love that it's it's fantastic yeah and she's right uh, there with the arrows like 
Mm. She's they gave her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they gave. They finally gave a friend like a really important role in the in the final fight, and like, yeah, it's awesome. Anyway, sorry, Mike, you were saying about no. Sammy Liu. No, that's. I mean, yeah, no, he was great. He was fine. He was really good. I liked him. He was appealing. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we're gonna jump to my favorite cast member. I thought I knew what love is, but now I really know. It's Aquafina as Katie. <laughs> Uh, when I saw her in those running shoes and that, what is that called that you wear around your waist? Um, a fanny like a little pack. fanny pack. Oh, I'm like, this is all I've been looking searching for my whole life. Uh, anyway, she was great in this movie. She's always funny. Um, perfectly cast. I mean, I don't know this character. Does this character exist in the comics? I have no idea, but I mean, she was a key, you know, part of the success of this film. I thought, uh, G.I. Julie, what'd you think of Aquafina? Um, I love her. Uh, she's hilarious. I'm not familiar with her rap career at all. But <laughs> so you're going to be soon. I've been, tr- oh my. I've been trying to get familiar, right? Um, but I all summer I had been just kind of um, trying to watch as much as I could because I didn't know how long I was going to be subscribed to HBO and Grave from when we did Justice League. So um, th- th- just in case you're wondering, I still have it. And whoever else is logged in should watch Nora from Queens, which she stars in because she's hilarious. Um, I, I th- OK, so I honestly, as it pertains to this movie, I thought she was just going to be sort of like pigeonholed into the funny character, like the, the funny friend character role. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I love how... Mm, like Josh was saying, they weren't like forced together romantically. And at the same time, you don't really know what either of their sexualities is because there are a couple scenes where like, she may be, she maybe expresses when she's his best friend, but when she sees his sister, she kind of like gives her a second look mm. as you should, because his sister is also <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought she was going to be another, um, it's like, oh, great. Um, it's a film with Asians and martial arts and dragons. She's just going to be, uh, she played the dragon in Raya and the Lost Dragon. Mm-hmm. So I thought maybe it was going to be kind of like typical, but it wasn't. Um, yeah, her character was just, it, it's like, it was, it was perfect. There wasn't too little uh kind of like like the spider-man movies you kind of forget about his asian best friend <laughs> mm-hmm. she was like Deadly. she was there like a sidekick right mm-hmm. crucial to the story right uh bex luther what do yeah. you think yeah and she was there for him from the beginning like they were buds they were bros and she found out that he's been lying to her her whole life and she, and then she was like well i guess we have to get on a plane to go see your dad <laughs> Or to go find mm-hmm. your sister, like she was ride or die. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that they they had that best friend, and like the physical closeness that they had without, like Josh and you and Julie were saying, without the, like they didn't. They're not together. They're just best friends, and mm-hmm. best friends lean on each other and are physically close and and care. Oh, it was beautiful. Also, she added just the perfect amount of balance between like having like an outsider perspective into this movie Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she was like what the hell's going on yeah i'm like i find that whenever you you go into these fantastical things i just i need a character who who am i in this movie and i am katie i am like my friend doesn't know kung fu and then my friend knows kung fu and i'm like huh (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was just so good when she was driving the bus i loved that she was fearless and she was constantly talking and she had her character moments and she had her character growth where she was like talking about how she has no purpose in life and no path and she doesn't care about anything. But then in the in a moment's notice, she takes the reins of the, the bus like over or she jumps on a plane for her best friend like this. This Good girl point. is, is mm-hmm. pure goodness. And, and I love that about her. I love that she wasn't corrupted or she wasn't held hostage and made to do it. No, she was she was good. And she, she was pure, and I love my Katie. I love her mm-hmm. and her fanny packs, and yes. her hanging out in in um, what was her what was uh, Shang Chi's sister's name? Jailing's bedroom, Shit. and they're just like chit chatting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh, yeah. what do you think? Yeah. yeah, straight from the beginning, they gave her stuff to do, which was great. And they kind of even set up like the bus scene. And then even afterwards, when they're trying to get to um, Tai Long, right? That's the 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 hidden city, right? Um, Talo. Talo, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, when all of like the trees are like closing around them, and she's getting the ger- directions from Trevor, like they mm-hmm. they really kind of like set her up with her thing, and they they like weave it through the story, and it, they make sure that she's got a purpose the entire time as a story point, not just as uh, well, we need somebody to crack jokes. Like, you know, she, she was, she was doing stuff along the way and it really felt more like an ensemble uh, movie. Just, just, just like how in guardians of the galaxy, like star Lord is kind of our main character and the person we're seeing everything through. We see him at the beginning with his mother and it's kind of like all about him, but it's also about, all of the other characters kind of coming together it kind of felt like that with uh, Shang Chi and Katie. They they it, like right from the the beginning they set up a really great uh, relationship and then they kept it throughout and um, it was really about the, their dynamic. And then uh, again, spoiler: by the end of the film, um, even though Shang Chi is the one with the ten rings, it's the duo that that pairing that's get that gets called. Uh, to Wong to meet the Avengers and uh, and eventually get signed up in the Avengers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I, I think she's great. Yes. All right. All right. We got a lot of characters to go, get through, so we gotta we gotta get moving here. Mandarin, the real Mandarin. Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, again, we already talked about his motivation for the story. Awesome. I don't know what else to say about him, Becca. I don't know if you can. <laughs> Control Should yourself. We all for leave. Your comments. And then yeah. It I'm just become the best cast. Yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking <laughs> about his like backstory where they're like, yeah, uh, he's a warlord. He's killed all these people. And then he has to find everything. And then all of a sudden, everything in the movie goes from gray to bright green and it stops. And like, it's the most beautifully romantic fight ever. It was stunning. This mm-hmm. man is the most, is like the, the, the best romantic actor I've ever witnessed. Hmm. <laughs> it was it was beautiful. The the love story was beautiful. Um this he went from horrible warlord to loving husband like it, it so easily. I right. I love this guy. This guy is great. I'm like how much like what else has he done? And then I look it up and I'm like, oh he's literally like a romance god in China. Oh, mm-hmm. that makes sense. And this is his like first like Western Hollywood film. Nailed it. Freaking nailed it. Mm-hmm. I think he was phenomenal. He was definitely like the the standout. I love the motivation. I love when he finally is like, oh, I I messed up and gives his rings to his son. Love that. Mm-hmm. Like that just the look in his eyes as he's dying. Right. Ugh, I cried. <laughs> I cried a lot during this this movie, but specifically because of this man when he lost his wife, when he made his son watch him kill a man, like oof. This guy, I hope he comes back. <laughs> okay, G.I. Julie, what do you think? I couldn't believe that this was his first Hollywood film. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was I was watching uh, the Vanity Fair, like Tony Leung takes you through um, his like filmography. And um, mm-hmm. one, he just like permanently is like BFF with Wong Kar Wai, which is cool. And um, I'm going to say, I agree with Becca. Uh, There is no better person that they could have cast in this role based on like just his quote, romantic film track record. He's played, um, he's played a straight man. He's played a gay man. He's, you know what I mean? Like he's just, he's played every man in a romantic scenario as far as you can play in Hong Kong. So to have him in this film and then to do what they did to us at the start of this film, where he not only is going in to, uh, to find and take the power from, uh, he was trying to take power from, from her. Right. Mm. But he ends up falling in love with and marrying her, which is Mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, And then having, 
having children who are also super powered. Like, isn't that just the best love story? Tony Leung's great. I hope mm-hmm. he is in more films in a, in North America. Um, but also, I wouldn't be upset if he continued to like still make other films in Hong Kong because they 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 cross the pond. So uh, mm-hmm. he's got a great track record. All right, Josh, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think that um, he is one of the best um, villains in the MCU we've 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 ever gotten. Um, mostly because like this is maybe the first time I actually believe that this character doesn't think he's doing anything bad. Right. Like maybe Good at point. the beginning, Good maybe point. maybe at the beginning when he was like the warlord. Right. He he was like, you know, he's he's doing evil things and he's he's a bad guy. But then once he falls in love, uh, everything changes for him. It's it's all about his family, his wife. You know, he's building things and putting that part of his life aside to focus on that. He he never once used the rings the like since he met her like once they got married he put them in a box and they were gone forever it wasn't until she died that he kind of went back and and started using them again and um he was motivated purely by his love for her and in that loss and like uh like everybody else has said uh picking somebody who is well known as a romantic actor is perfect for this because that's exactly what is motivating this character even though he's the bad guy and we're not rooting for him we also understand why he's doing it and yeah i think that he did a fantastic job and that might be the best part of this film i uh, i have to agree with that okay yeah. sorry we got to speed her speed her speed it up uh, we're going to jump All to right. fala chen who played the sister no, she, she played the she played the the mother. Oh, she played the mother. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh so we're sorry, who played the sister then? Uh I'm Meng, sorry. Meng yeah, Ren Shang? Yeah, I'm probably going to yeah. This is just yeah, 20 minutes of white people butchering <laughs> names. <Right. laughs> I mean, I thought and one was... Asian who's not Chinese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I thought she was great. I know people complained about her haircut. I thought her haircut was fine. I don't know. Oh, For but, who? Uh, the sister. Oh, you uh, excuse complained? you. They complained about her hair. Yeah. They're not used to a boss ass bitch. Then clearly, mm. the, that just the, sounds like, a lot like people who like complained about Carrie Ann Moss's haircut in The Matrix. Like mm-hmm. her pixie cut. It's too boyish. So what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just She's thought Mia Wallace. Ass. You know, that's that's just me though. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't, it's I don't... convenient for kicking mm-hmm. ass. <laughs> uh, Josh, would you think of her? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jolie. Oh well, I I, do, I was gonna say I will say that um, for all the praise we kind of glommed on Aquafina's Katie, this is kind of I think the character that maybe got neglected a couple times, but not really, okay. because she still had a very clear. Th- she still her plot had a very clear through line. She is this kingpin, um, but but they don't really go into too much detail because I feel like they're going to go into detail later in the MCU about it. Um, and she didn't really have a huge role in the the end fight, but that's because they already kind of set it up throughout the story where she was like, well, no matter what you did, dad always wanted you to be the star. And I... I learned in the background, I just kept quiet and it kept the heat off of me. And that was like really just her character's MO throughout the whole entire film. Josh, what do you think? Yeah, um, I think that uh, the uh, Shang-Chi and hers relationship um, was not as strong as the as as the, the father and son dynamic. Um, but the fact that we kind of learn that Shang-Chi abandoned her and like ran away without her and um, told her that he was going to come back. That kind of made her grow up with a lot of resentment and kind of pushed her into becoming the person that she did. Um, And uh, I think it was really great that by the end of it, uh, at the end of the movie, it had to be those two characters that kind of 
uh, bonded and and worked together to defeat this final boss once their father was gone. Um, so I did really like that, but I do agree with Jolie. I feel like she's the one that uh, it felt like she had the least like character growth. She's the one I probably learned the least about. Like besides like strong like warlord type character like i couldn't really tell you anything else about her sure um and i'm sure that that is also so they can develop her more in the future and kind of uh make it miss like make her a little bit more ambiguous so that way when we find out that she's still doing like bad things by the end of the movie we we're not totally like uh surprised by it i guess or like we we can kind of believe that maybe she's still doing bad things but yeah bex did you have anything else to say well yeah because the the relationship with her and and shang chi is very strained obviously because like clearly when their mom died she just lost pretty much every relationship that she had her father basically didn't care about her and shang was busy training so like she did it all about on her own and she's had to be completely independent which makes sense why her character would then just go off on her own right and then even in the end scene when it's like she's like just let me go and he doesn't and she's like a little taken aback by the fact that he doesn't it's not going to completely change her life like one time saving the world doesn't doesn't stop a year an entire lifetime's worth of neglect and hurt so that after credit scene where she is supposedly dismantling the rest of her father's empire, but instead decides to take it over. Um, I think it's kind of dope. I think I would love to see her take that hurt and take that pain. And even though she was a hero in this movie, take that and maybe in a future movie, be more of a villain character. I think Mm -hmm. it'd be interesting because like we know exactly what she's gone through and Marvel has been doing that with their villains lately where it's like, Hey, um, they're not all bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and, they're, and they're all unique. Uh, I'll give Marvel credit. Each of the films, none of the none of the films are really like the others, right? They're all kind of like a different genre and a different story. So I like that. It's not just generic bad guy wants to freeze Gotham or whatever, right? Like, like you're saying, like, there's a, mm-hmm. a a unique relationship. The fact that the bad guy was the father, and then the next movie it'll probably be his sister. That'll be interesting, right? Yeah. Like, they keep that family dynamic in in this, but like that's the undertones, and then. It, it goes on from there. And then even with like Shang and, and Katie, that like found family stuff. Cause mm-hmm. like he like clearly cares about her, like Katie's family too. Right. Mm-hmm. Like he, he, he kisses her grandmother goodbye and knows a lot about their family. So like his found family versus his, his blood related family is an interesting concept, but yeah, no, she's dope. Um, I love her fight ring. I love at the end when she still has her fight ring buddy, like ride or die buddy with her. John, 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 <laughs> Um, no, I think that's really interesting. She's like, well, you know what? I'm just going to do it myself. I just, mm-hmm. I can't wait to see, like, clearly this movie was more of a setup for her and it was busy ex- doing exposition on other characters, but I want to see how being the, the, the other sibling, the pushed away sibling, the one that mm-hmm. didn't get anyone's attention, the one in the shadows, I want to see what she does next. I hope that they do continue her story. Um, because they've done this kind of before in the past, like, we haven't seen anything about Baron Mordo since the first Doctor Strange movie, right? Like he was his partner who was kind of like the prodigy that everybody thought was going to be the Sorcerer Supreme. And then he was kind of pushed aside and we were like hinted at by the end of the movie and like a post credit scene that he's going to become like this big bad guy. And then I just I haven't heard anything. And then I don't think he's going to be in the new Doctor Strange movie either. So I really hope that they do continue and do something with her. I'd be pretty upset um, if they didn't. Uh, un- unlike with Baron Mordo, where it's like, I didn't have any ties with that character at all. And I didn't have a lot of ties with most of that movie. So I don't care that they're not continuing that thread. Where this one, it's like, I definitely want to see what's happening here. Right. Uh, okay, so now we're going to jump to one of my favorite characters, Trevor played by Ben Kingsley. Uh, Marvel is so awesome for bringing him back and tying this into Iron Man. I thought that was one of the 
my favorite things about this movie, even though I don't care about continuity that much, but I thought it was a really clever twist. Obviously, Ben Kingsley is a great actor and he was funny throughout. One of my favorite gags was when they were in the car and he was talking about how, how he realized he wanted to be an actor when he's from seeing Planet of the Apes. And mm-hmm. then the other characters were like, you mean you thought you realized you wanted to be an actor because and then he and then he cuts them off when I saw that monkeys could ride horses. Yes. And he keeps correcting them. I, I was screaming, laughing at that part. I loved it. Uh, G.I. Julie, what would you think of Ben Kingsley as Trevor? <laughs> Even saying his when, name, I laugh anyway. When they when <laughs> when they got thrown into jail and he was in there, I was flabbergasted. Right. Like, mm-hmm. I gagged aloud. Um, okay, hilarious to, I, in my mind, Ben Kingsley is like a nobleman. He's like mm. astute and educated <laughs> and cultured. And then he's playing to have him play this Trevor Slater League character where he's kind of like an airhead actor is fun. Um, uh, they, they found a really good way to bring him back. Uh, in order to apologize for what they did <laughs> when they had him play the Mandarin. So, yeah, which <laughs> they just they're fo- firing on all cylinders right now. And it's mm-hmm. and this is this is part of it. Like, the, it's amazing. Anyway, I just I don't really have too much to say other than like it was a really <laughs> who knew that, like, you know, how many years later, almost 20 years later, <laughs> we're going to get him <laughs> returning in mm-hmm. another in a future Marvel film. Like I bet he didn't even think he was going to return. So right, right. Max Luther, what do you think? That gives me hope for Justin Hammer to come back. I'm oh really my excited. God, please. <laughs> oh, what's uh, his name? Uh, Sam, Sam Rockwell. Rockwell. Yes. Oh, the best Marvel villain. Yes. I, yeah, because they're in that back in they're in that one shot show. together, right? Yeah. From like back when Marvel did one shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, I love the idea that shang chi's dad was like this guy's pretending to be me i'm gonna break him out of prison and kill him and then he ends up thinking he's funny so he just keeps him <laughs> just mm-hmm. keeps him under his house as a as like a court jester i think that's hilarious i love that he was just comedic fodder like they were just like making fun of him like he was the punchline there was no like moment where he saved the day or anything like any like that garbage no it was just him and the little poof ball Morris did way more to save the day than he ever could. He was just a translator. I love that. I, mm-hmm. I thought it was funny. I didn't even know he was in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I did either. Maybe I did. I don't know. Because like uh, normally everything's spoiled, right? Like I knew Abomination yeah. and Wong were in the movie, but like they must have kept that a secret because I don't think I've ever I saw anybody talking about it. I it's did just... hear about that, so I knew about that. Yeah. So I just I, I thought it was like a fun little. The, the universe is so alive. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Josh, what do you think? Um, I thought it was okay. I think Josh. that was maybe the I know, I know. I think that was maybe like the one part where I was like, mm, that's fine, whatever. Oh, I love it. Uh, I it also feels like the one part of the movie that um if no if nobody had seen any other MC movie, they'd be like, What? What is going on here? Like, who is this? Why do we care about this character? Why is he here? Okay, I guess he's he's going to lead us to the thing. And then they keep kind of like cutting back to him. And it's like, I don't know. I thought it was okay. I think I think they could have come up with any way for them to get to the city. It didn't have to be him. Sure. Um, let alone like go with them. I think that maybe it would have been better if you just kind of stayed behind. And like um, the, oh, what's his name? The The little creature maybe guided them. Morris. Morris, right? Like, I don't know. I I thought he was okay. See, for me, I, it's like I really don't like, for example, in I think it was Ant-Man when they shoehorn in a cameo by Falcon. But in this movie, I like that they put uh, Mandarin slash Trevor in because not only does it explain a previous kind of guffaw, but it's funny. It's also entertaining. It's not just like, why was that in there? But I guess if you feel that way, then it didn't work for everybody. Mm. But, okay, guys, last character. Let's try to be quick with this. We're going to talk about Razor Fist. Never heard of him. Looks like pre-made to be a toy, like a 1980s right. <laughs> He-Man toy. He was okay. I mean, he had his one funny part, right, where he finally agreed to help out 
all mm-hmm. of the good guys. Um, G.I. Julie, what would you think of this guy? What's his name? Uh, Florian, Florian Montino. Montino, who played Razor Fist. I don't even know who this guy is, but did you like him? Uh, like he's a wrestler uh, or something. So I, I like I had to I had to look out a German Romanian actor model and former heavyweight boxer. All I can think, oh, he played um, Drogo in Creed too. Maybe that's I don't know. I don't know who he is. I oh gotcha. Okay. Registered. Yeah, I um, the, a lot of the jokes made at the expense of his razor fist um, were funny, and that's really all I can that, that impart. Right. I think he could have been a little bit better. Like he was okay, but he he was like if it was like a James Gunn movie, he would have given him a James Gunn would have given him a little bit more personality or more of a gag or something. He was a little bit flat. Wasn't great. Uh, I thought. Yeah. But, oh, Josh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. No, go. Uh, oh, um, yeah, I think that um, the fact that they gave Wen Wu uh, uh, a goon makes totally makes sense, and I like that. But it's the fact that they gave him two, and they kind of had Razor Fist, but then they also had Death Dealer. Death Dealer, which was like kind of in the marketing, right? We see this guy with this like Kabuki mask, I believe it's called, and it's like yeah, it's super cool. intimidating and scary. Um, but he's like barely in the movie. Like he he fights Shang Chi um in the apartment building and then he's like gone after that after that essentially and then he right. comes back later on just to get his soul sucked mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and he's gone so i think that maybe if they combine those two characters mm-hmm. um uh they could have given death dealer the arm or just made um uh, a razor fist uh, a chinese character and have him there the entire time kind of like training shang chi and then later sure. b- comes back and then switches uh uh from when wu's team to shang chi's um but yeah i so i so i think that that's maybe where the weakness comes from but i did like him better than death dealer um, okay uh i love the comedy of it i love his stupid freaking dinky car that he's got <laughs> like it's got it's his car's got a razor fist written on it with like this big like 90s like zigzag pattern and it totally looks like a, a freaking hot wheels car mm-hmm. um i love that that he's got his own like branding and stuff um <laughs> later on the, they they need like special weapons to fight the soul eaters so he like chops off the the head of a, a of a pike and replaces his sword with with one of the yes. weapons that can use them that's super cool um and he survives by the end of it, so they could do do more stuff with him. So uh, I think it's like the perfect use of like a D list Marvel character right. that nobody's ever heard of. I've never heard of Razor Fist before this, but I think it's a great pull to bring in to have to be this like background character that they can do whatever they want with in the future. So right. um, yeah, he's pretty cool. All right, Bex Luthor, what do you think? Yeah, well, I was reading about all the characters after I saw the movie, I was like, who the hell's Razor Fist? And he is from Masters of Kung Fu. <laughs> he, like, actually oh, is okay. from the Shang-Chi comics. Um, he's called Razor Fist because he punches very fast. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. But they were like, nah, give him a sword hand. It's great. Um, it's cool, whatever, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, people having weapons as a hand is very common, we know. <laughs> yeah. It just is a thing. Like you lose, you lose a hand, you lose an arm. You sick weapon. That's what happens. Um, yeah, Razor Fist's fine. He's a good. He's you know what for for a side character goon, fine. I just would love to know how the Wenwu Master of the Ten Rings, the Mandarin, got this guy as his right hand man. Like this buffoon. <laughs> <laughs> This like big muscly boy. Like I want to know wh- how that how how that happened. Did did Razor Fist go? Oh, that's the biggest bad guy in the land. I'm gonna work for him. I just want I just want to know. <laughs> I don't know what they're like. They seem to have some sort of relationship. What's what's that about? Where'd you get him from? <laughs> yeah. Where'd Razor Fist come from? Well, I'm sure they'll explore that in future movies. Uh, good won't. news. This movie uh, is a huge hit. I believe it's the biggest hit since COVID started. It's already made a hundred million mm-hmm. dollars. Uh, final comment, Julie, how happy are you that these 
idiots who complain about diversity and representation. This is another victory, just like Black Panther. It's a smash hit. How does that make you feel? Um, of course, I feel all sorts of ways, but it makes me feel um, I'd like I'd, I, I care more about my own feelings at this point. I always I don't take any I don't take any satisfaction in knowing that, like, my thoughts have been vindicated by this movie. Um, I just know that it's, I think it's because I know that they don't learn and they'll think of some other reason to right. rally against di like diversifying a cast or uh, making sure there's representation in a cast. They'll just, mm -hmm. uh, and they'll rally even harder when um, a white, a traditionally white character is replaced with somebody of color, Spider-Man. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's going to be a bloodbath and this did nothing, unfortunately, to um, quell that. Um, but I will say I'm so fucking happy it exists. Um, now I have Crazy Rich Asians. Now I have Shang-Chi, um, Raya and the Last Dragon. I mean, there's I've never liked Mulan. R Raya is a better Disney uh, animated film uh, as far as representation, I feel, is concerned. So I feel like they just like uh, ever since they came out and said that they they have what is it a, a, a diversity uh, committee <laughs> at Disney. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, good, good. Um, yeah. Again, they're not going to learn anything. If anything, they're just going to rally against it harder. Unfortunately. <sighs> Okay, guys, uh, you guys have to wrap up the segment because I have my ride waiting for me outside. So I'm actually going to leave this call. You guys can wrap it up. Talk as long as you want or as short as you want, okay? Okay. Do you want to say your final Yeah, I'll real just quick? say okay. I, I do recommend the film. Uh, I, I do think it's on par with Black Widow, but this movie is at least more original. So I'd probably rather rewatch this movie. I'll leave it at that. And I'm looking forward to more Aquafina and more karaoke, okay? All but right. Otherwise, sorry, I got to go, guys. But I got a movie premiere tonight with a bunch of people that don't talk to me anymore and block me on Facebook. So I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Oh, nice. All right. Have fun. You did it to yourself. You did. Ooh. It's a Mike L. Free episode right. of the Comic Book Syndicate after dark. All the bad guys Ooh. are here. We can finally <laughs> talk about video games. Yeah, let's talk about Pokemon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that um, going off what Jolie said, uh, I think it goes to show that if you get people who are from that culture to tell the stories that are about them and um, tell like let people tell their own stories, it's going to work. Look at Black Panther. Look at Shang-Chi. Look at Raya. They're all movies that um, are better at they're better for representation than any other film like Mulan because it wasn't directed by two white guys, right? It, it's not, not, and who I love, I love Ron Clements and John Musker, but what do they know about, you know, Chinese culture? They, they might be able to do research on it, but like I can open up Wikipedia too. It's, it's important to get the people to tell their own stories. And I think that's why this works so incredibly well. Um, it has a lot of heart and um, I to totally disagree with what Mike said. I think that for me, this is like leagues better than Black Widow. Uh, um, I already forget like anything about any of the characters in Black Widow, B besides maybe Yolanda. Um, these characters are going to stick around in my mind for a long time. Um, the set pieces are much better. They don't have these awful cuts where it's like somebody's throwing a fist and we get three shots of this one punch. They, the, they got the stunt cord coordinators to that know Kung Fu to come in and help with that so they can keep the camera still while a fight scene is going on and you can actually see everything that's happening. Um, I think that there's just so much about this movie that is better than a lot of MCU movies because it's allowed to be its own thing. Um, so I loved this this film. I, I really liked it. 
Yeah. No. <laughs> Becca, we know yeah. you. <laughs> Look, I'm not just all like, ah, oh, show me hot people and I like a movie. No, this is, it was genuinely very, very compelling to me. And well, I didn't, don't, clearly don't have the, the background of like, of Shang-Chi, obviously, but that, that heart of family and the, the trauma of losing someone and it affecting the rest of your life and, and all of these other like sub things that were happening on really affected me. Like I was a mess in the theater. <laughs> I was like, this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when Shang-Chi finally meets his aunt, his, his dead mother's sister, and like he like takes a second look at her and like she's this this amazing woman like his mother was and it's just like I was like bawling. <laughs> I just I love when they introduce new fantasy worlds into this universe. I love that this universe is constantly expanding and now we have some very interesting plot lines to follow up on, like all mm -hmm. of these after credit scenes and what's where the this this dragons from a dark dimension what dimension what's in that dimension <laughs> uh mm. where is he from what else is there mm. Who, who's who's ringing the phone on the 10 rings who's on the <laughs> other end what's, what's going who do we think it is <laughs> to be honest i when they um <laughs> We already said this was going to be spoil, spoilery. Um, when they showed us Captain Marvel and a un, like a Bruce Banner who is sort of like a little bit older and a little bit broken still, mm -hmm. um, I was like, oh great, there's we're into phase four and they're still not over kind of like making us spin our wheels and speculate. Fine. Fine. I'll <laughs> play. Um, it, it's not, I find that cut scenes aren't as like, or the end credit scenes aren't as cryptic as they used to be. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> I'm okay with this one. Yeah. I'm curious <laughs> to see who, who is being called. Mm -hmm. Who, who's, mm -hmm. who's, who's on the other end of the phone. Fin Fang Foom. More dragons! <laughs> more dragons! Cool. Honestly, yeah. I, uh, there, I, my partners watch so many YouTube videos of like speculations, and I'm like, oh, it could be anybody. They're just setting up the fact that it's somebody. Like they I'm, probably don't even know yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. I don't it's know. They have, it's Mephisto. It's always, it's always Mephisto. Mephisto. Yeah. They're gonna give it to us. Finally. Finally, yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense for it to be Mephisto, but maybe it is. No. Have you uh, guys heard that everybody thinks that Doctor Strange is Mephisto in the yeah, Spider-Man like, film? It couldn't be Doctor Strange <laughs> because he's he's a jerk. And I'm like, do you remember <sighs> Doctor Strange? He's an irresponsible idiot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that third episode of What If. Mm, yeah. If they're going to write all that stuff into play, which I hope they don't. Oh, my God. Zombies. Fuck off. Um, oh, I like the zombies. I liked it, too. But yeah, I like the episode. Time watching but... it, I was like, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, so if they do, because if they write in that this exists um, or the like the episodes of what if could happen, then we have two Doctor Stranges. There could be a, a Doctor Strange, but an also a Mephisto Doctor Strange mm -hmm. because of that Cthulhu monster. Like they're already starting to tie in the what if episodes together. That uh, the tentacle monster that comes through right. when Captain Carter comes out. Shumagorath. That's it. Do you, think that, do you think that was movies. Shumagorath? The, I don't know. Uh, it, it's I mean, it's a big tentacle monster from another true. dimension. Yeah. And and. Doctor Strange is directly connected to him. True. So it makes me think it's Shumagorath. Mm -hmm. Also, the rest of the internet agrees. So the internet's never <laughs> been wrong. Can't wait to that, see Andrew Garfield and so Tobey Maguire. That, so you think that in What If, Doctor Strange just like slurped up Shumagorath like that? Just like, like a Calamari. string of Pischetti? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why not? We're not Anybody even talking come? about Shang-Chi anymore. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who's on the other side um, of the rings? Also, I, my wife's right got now. a cameo. Shout out to my wife. I was literally like not expecting to see her at all. Yeah, that's great. Brie Larson, call me. I was really, uh, yeah, I was really worried because she kind of, the animation of 
Captain Marvel for What If doesn't look like Brie Larson. So I was like really worried that they're going to recast her. <laughs> Which Don't you they... dare. Right? Oh. I will burn this earth to the ground. It doesn't look like Tom Holland either, and he's not going to recast, so. Yeah. But he also That's didn't true. voice him, so. How do we uh, end this now? There's, there's only three of us here. Uh, I have an idea. Cuts to black. <laughs> <laughs> Just right after that, we're like... <laughs> My phone rings. Uh, Who is it? I was going to say, go get your dog. <laughs> oh. Unless he's sweeping. Don't disturb he's the baby. Asleep. Okay. I kind of want to wake him up, though, since he always Make bugs him... me when I'm trying to do something. Parker! Hey! Come here! <laughs> he's just looking at me like, what the fuck do you want? Come here, edit this part out. Come on, we gotta edit. We gotta finish the episode. Mike Come left on. and it immediately went like, from no. structure to chaos, like, right away. No. <laughs> That's fine. We were, like, on our recommendations, which, obviously, we all recommend it. Yeah, all recommend who's, right? who's gonna say, don't see Shang-Chi? Yeah. Who's that it's guy? Got, it's got like a 98% on audience score. It's like the highest rated uh, superhero film uh, audience wise. I mean, it was rad. Yeah, it's great. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much then for, for <laughs> doing outro. For, yeah, I'll do a quick outro real quick. Thank you guys so much for for joining us for the Shang-Chi review. Uh, you can follow us on all our socials at the Comic Book Syndicate on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, you can go to the Comic Book Syndicate dot com. Correct. That's what it is. Dot com. Um, all of our podcasts you can find on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you can find podcasts. Um, so, yeah, thank you for joining us. And uh, until next time. Bye. <laughs> Spider cast, go for it. Go for it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, let's all do it. Okay, do you want to dance? Go, go for it! it!